Hey everybody, this is Fracture here again, and in this video we're going to be covering two things, uh, performance techniques and then side chaining. Uh, in terms of performance techniques, what I mean is pretty much a culmination of all the stuff that I've been going through and exploring uh, in my tutorial series. So that means, you know, triggering samples from the 25 key keyboard or just using the drum pads versus a drum rack or using an audio track, etc. So I'm just going to start off by finding a sample out of the sample pack that I actually linked below in the description. It's called Lush and Expansive Atmosphere. It's actually one I created and I posted it for free at freesound.org. So definitely go download it and you can try it out, experiment, use it as much as you like. So I'm just going to pick this sample and I'm going to drop it into a new audio track. So I'm just going to go to the launch options and I'm going to set the quantization to none. This way it'll just trigger whenever I click on I click play on the sample. So what I want to do in this video is show you that I, I want to be playing the drums off of the drum pads, but the 25 keys are going to be storing some other samples. And for this video, it'll be a uh, atmospheric chord pad sample. What you'll notice is some of the drum pads send the same exact MIDI signal as some of the keys because they're in the same range. So that's why I have, I've only set up the drum pads, but even when I press some of these keys, you can hear those drum pads. But when I change to a different octave, it gets out of the range that is shared with the drum pads. So what I want to do is I want to select a MIDI parameter that is out of that octave of the drum pad so there's no interference. So I'm going to sync that pad sample I'm going to use to a key that would make it easy for me to uh, press the drums and press that key in just one hand. So if I want to press it with my thumb, it's pretty intuitive to whatever's comfortable for you, so you'll figure it out on your own once you're placing your samples on the uh, 25 keys. Sorry, so I just want the uh, sample to start from a uh, different part of it, so I'm just going to drag the start locator, and uh, so now it's going to start from there every time I uh, press it. So now that we have a sample and the drum set set up, what I want to do is I want to be able to sidechain um, the sample every time the kick or the snare hits. Uh, what sidechaining really means is every time you have some sort of trigger or some other sound that is played, it'll duck the sound or compress the sound uh, that you're interested in compressing. So I'll, I'll show you that example. So what you want to do is you want to go to your live devices and you want to locate a compressor and then uh, the audio track uh, where you have the sample located, you just drag the compressor onto that audio track. Now just press this little arrow over here, uh, it's the sidechain toggle button, and then click on the sidechain button, and that will uh, toggle an extended sidechain. Now what I do is I need an input, or you know I need a trigger, something to trigger the sidechain, so uh, what I want it to be is the kick and the snare. Uh, if this sounds a little weird to you, if you're not understanding what I mean, uh, just keep following and you'll see the sound that I create and then it'll make total sense. So for audio input I've selected my drum rack because uh, the drum rack is where I'm going to find my trigger sound. And then if I select the drop down right below that I'm just going to look for my kick. Uh, this is awesome because Ableton gives you a whole bunch of options. You can use the kick before the effects was applied, uh, after the effects, or you know after the mixer. So I've selected my kick before the effects. Now you'll see right under the uh, threshold bar, you'll see that the audio is actually coming up and that's good. That means that your trigger is being recognized, but right now there is no compression happening. There's no side chaining. But if you're to drag down the threshold, then you'll start to see the effect. You notice every time I hit the kick, it ducks the sound. So that's all it is. That's what side chaining is. And that is what's happening here. Every time that kick hits, it's a trigger that compresses or ducks the uh, sound that you're interested in side chaining. You can adjust the attack, release time, and the ratio however you'd like. Uh, but yeah, I'll let you sort of figure that out on your own. That's more a matter of taste. But yeah, now you'll see how the side chain sounds like. Now let's say I also want it uh, for the snare. Uh, what do I do now? Well, a uh, beautiful thing about Ableton is I can just copy, or sorry, I can just duplicate the effect. And then for my uh, trigger my, in my input, I'm just gonna select the snare instead. So if you listen to a lot of uh, hip hop, trap, or chill wave, or you know, 
uh, ambient sort of stuff, you'll hear this sort of swingy side chaining uh, effect every time the uh, kick and snare are hit, and it sounds really nice. So you've got the side chaining set up, you've got uh, a sample set up, now it's more about, you know, where you got to start thinking about building a performance, you know, everything's more or less coming into place. Uh, so what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to be duplicating that one sample and uh, editing around a bit and start, you know, creating a progression of the uh, chord. So I'm just creating duplicates of that sample and then those other cells that you can see here, I am syncing them, MIDI syncing them to other parts of the keyboard. And now remember, I always come back to transposition. So I'm going to go to that, that first duplicate that I've made. And I'm going to transpose it uh, one octave down. That's negative 12 semitones. So now the technique's pretty much been shown it's been demonstrated you can experiment as much as you want add different types of samples add bass lines synth leads you know however you want to do it you understand how to sidechain you know how to set up your drums you know how to set up your samples comfortably so you can play them uh, on the keys as well on the drum pads and yeah so i've just created some more duplicates and i've uh transposed one of those samples by seven semitones and one of them by five semitones uh, to get this effect Now it really comes down to practice. You see, the point of this series was to really make you see the MPK as less of just a basic low-end MIDI controller and, you know, more of an instrument. You, you can do this really with any MIDI controller, but it just goes to show that, you know, there are plenty of ways to think outside of the box when it comes to MIDI controllers. So now that you've got all this set up, you know, why not uh, use one of the knobs? I'm just going to throw on a basic low pass filter onto one of the knobs. I have a tutorial explaining how to use the FX knobs uh, for one of my other videos, so definitely check that out. But yeah, I'm just doing that quickly here to show you sort of everything together. This uh, tom tom sounds kind of uh, tonal. I just wanted to uh, match a bit better with the chord that I'm using, so I'm just gonna pitch shift it down by one semitone. Sounds pretty dope, doesn't it? So you can do this, I've included all the samples that I've used in these uh, tutorial videos so far in the link below, and so, you know, try it out, and if you're confused with anything, leave a message for me, or, you know, check out any of the other tutorial videos if you're unsure about something. Thank you so much for watching and remember before you move on to a new 
instrument of any sort, remember that whatever the old one is that you have, that you fully mastered it. Like so, you know, I want you to fully master the MPK Mini before you move on to any other bigger, better uh, MIDI controller, and then you'll appreciate that a lot more. <laughs>